we'd like to talk to you briefly about Midnight BSD 1.0. Our new release is available on our FTP server, and you can download it right now. This release features several new features. Um, you've got AMD B350, X370 support for the, the new Horizon motherboard chipsets. Um, I recommend strongly buying an AMD Ryzen processor right now for Midnight BSD if that's something that you're interested in. Um, it's a really good uh, investment. Um, they're great chips. They're cost-effective. Um, I've been extremely happy with them. I've got a 1700 and a 2200G running both right now. Um, they've both been really good chips. The 2200G, of course, doesn't have graphics acceleration support. Um, our graphics acceleration is roughly equivalent to like the Linux 3.18 kernel or so. So keep that in mind, like really new stuff's not gonna work. Um, there is the binary driver for NVIDIA cards. I don't know long-term how long that's gonna work, but currently it does work and you can run like an NVIDIA 960 with, with an APSD or, or something older than that. Um, I had an NVS whatever workstation card in it, an HP workstation working with the oldest version as well. Um, so that's about available right now. Uh, Midnight BSD also has Beehive support, so you can run Midnight BSD and Beehive natively, um, and that works out great. Uh, you can also boot FreeBSD. In order to do that, you need either Grub or the FreeBSD bootloader file from a, like a FreeBSD 10.x release. Either of those will work. I have a port um, for both of those is available in, in ports as well, so you can get Beehive um, working. Um, this release probably doesn't work well with Windows. I know FreeBSD 11 and 12 have some new features to make trying to boot Windows easier. Um, those are not available, so that's not gonna work too well. You could probably boot Linux on it also. Um, I haven't tested that yet, but I'm pretty confident that's gonna work. Um, in terms of the kernel, the Linux emulation supports 64-bit and 32-bit binaries. Currently, we haven't updated our ports yet, so there isn't a, a user land for the 64-bit yet. I'm planning on doing that probably in the next couple weeks. There's also a hardware issue. Um, if you have a really, well, I shouldn't say really, really recent at this point, but if you have like a 170, 270, or newer Intel chipset, um, so that's like KP Lake Era or newer, basically, um, you may have problems with ACPI where sys control minus A hangs, reboot hangs, things like that. There's a known bug in the ACPI code that we have. I'm planning on updating this in a future release. But right now, it, you can get the system to boot and work, but you may see some errors and you may see some hangs with certain utilities. Um, I'm hoping to get this fixed soon because it affects one of my systems here. Um, so that's kind of the the short version of where we are with hardware support, there's updated Intel drivers, so several new Intel, if you have wired Intel NICs, um, you know, the, the M, the IX, the IGB, all those have updates. So newer newer stuff works. I have three systems in the house that are using 10 gig cards right now from Intel, the 540 chipset, I believe. Um, those work great, we're getting 10 gig speeds. Um, I have a lot of a lot of Intel NICs in the house currently, in general, I, I recommend those strongly. Um, as far as solid state drives, you can use MVME now. I have like a $50 cheap EDA data um, in my desktop, which is an AMD Ryzen um, X370 chipset with a uh, Ryzen 7 1700, and that's working really well. Um, graphics acceleration will work obviously for the older cards but not the newer ones so um, in my case I have a, my desktop dual boots Windows and Midnight BSD and in Windows I like to game so I have a, a recent Radeon card and that does not work. Um, some of my other systems have acceleration working great. That's something to be aware of. Um, in, in general the desktop environment isn't there yet. Um, I'm planning on doing a lot of updates to packages and ports um, the next month or two to try to get the desktop situation sorted out. So this release covers the base system. It does not cover the desktop environment stuff that I had hoped to get for 1.0. But now that this is done, I can focus on that and actually make progress. So that's great news. Um, once we've got this out, you know, there's a lot of applications that can get updated. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be really nervous and 
anxiously waiting for newer browsers in particular. That's something I want to prioritize here. I've been working on porting uh, Firefox 52 ESR, which at this point is kind of old, but um, that's the last version that doesn't require Rust for everything to work. And I'm, I'm working on that, and hopefully I will have that available in ports by the end of the year. It is taking me a long time. There are a lot of changes to make. But that's, that's a goal I have. And once that's in, in base, um, I'm hoping to get, or in ports, I'm hoping to get, uh, you know, a newer Chromium working as well. Um, that's, that's a general problem that we have right now. Um, I would say the single biggest problem for desktop use is just browser support, getting more browsers, newer browsers, better browsers. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, if you're planning on using Midnight BSD as a desktop environment, you know, as a workstation, I would wait a few months before you install. So don't do it today. <laughs> if you want to help out and help me get this stuff working, you know, I would love that. Um, you know, hit me on, Sla or on, uh, on IRC, hit me on email, let me know, Twitter, let me know that you want to help and, and what you're willing to do, and, and we'll get you working on the project. Um, something else I'd like to discuss, um, currently the project is hosted in Subversion except for the website, so, you know, imports and, and the source tree are all in Subversion. I know a lot of newer developers like using Git, and I, I use Git all the time for other projects, and it is quite nice for, for a lot of things. I've avoided up to this point because of the massive amount of files and, and just data that's in our Subversion repository. It's not nearly as big as like FreeBSD or OpenBSD or one of the other projects, certainly, but um, our repository size is pretty large, and Git has not historically scaled that well to that. I mean, you need to download the entire thing, and it, it's you know not ideal, but um, doing pull requests on GitHub and things like that is, is certainly much easier for developers. So I love feedback on whether or not you think the project should should switch to Git, and you know, would you want it mirrored on GitHub? Uh, we probably host our own Git repository still, but I could probably put a mirror up pretty easily um, for that. So that would be something, you know, hit me on Twitter or something and let me know. That would be really helpful. Um, Fornix put out an, an article about our release today, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can check that out. Um, I'm still, in terms of packages, um, I need to talk a little about that. Um, we don't have updated packages yet for 32-bit. And in fact, they're built for the old package manager. I did an update of that probably like two weeks ago. And so we need to do a fresh build. I started the build today and discovered a bug in the release actually with Perl. So I'm going to re-roll the ISOs later today for 32-bit. If you already have it downloaded and installed, um, all you need to do is rebuild Perl from source and it will solve the problem. So the issue is that the build system I used had an older version of current on it initially and I updated to 1.0 release code and because Groff wasn't installed when Perl was built it didn't correctly work for installing man pages and stuff so the second that you rebuild it and reinstall it on an existing install it should pick up Groffs there and then all your ports and everything will build with man pages correctly so that's the only issue with the release that I'm aware of other than the ACPI thing I mentioned um, those are the two big things right now. So things that we need to do in a future release are binary updates. That's still not done yet. Um, and that is a biggie for a lot of people, and I understand that. Um, we also do not have the desktop stuff done yet. Um, I'm going to more aggressively focus on that in the next year. That's going to be a big, big project for me. Um, hoping to have something somewhat usable available within the next three months or so. Um, definitely something I'm going to work on between now and, and January. And I will do an update on Twitter on the MinIPSD account if, if um, we get that working better. And I will do a follow-up release also because people tend to associate whatever packages I have a release with what's in the release and that's really not how it works with MinIPSD. I replace the packages you know, periodically through the lifetime of release. So if you were to download 0 0.8 today um, and install packages, the packages that were available back then are no longer there. 
the newer packages are, you know, up to a certain point, I, I refresh those. So um, that's something to take in mind too. Um, as we evolve I mean, like BSD packages, you get new stuff up to the point I stop building. So, you know, zero to eight packages are not backward compatible with the current package manager either. That's another thing to, to warn people about. There's a couple of new fields in the new package format that are not available in the old one. Um, unlike some of the other BSDs, our package manager works on SQLite primarily, so we have SQL databases in there. And so in addition to the master, um, what tracks what's installed in your system, that's a SQLite database called master.db. We also have index.db, which is downloaded as a bzip file from our FTP server. That is a list of everything that is available right now for packages. And then each individual package also has a SQLite database in it in, inside the tarball. So if you were to open up in like, you know, tar XBF that, you would see a contents.db file in there. And inside that is all the metadata, the asset list, everything about a package is released in there. So that's a little different than, you know, say someone that's used to FreeBSD packages, which uses static files and things like that. So our format changes. Um, we try to make a backer compatible usually, but in this case, I did a breaking change and it's, it will upgrade an existing database if you do like an upgrade, but it doesn't handle the old packages on the newer one. That, that part does not work. So you will get errors today if you try to install a package from 32-bit until I, until I get this updated. And that's what's going on. So, I, you know, I think that that covers some of this stuff. I mean, there's a lot in the release. Um, it's hard to enumerate everything. I think I did a good job in the release notes of covering details about specific hardware that works and everything like that. But short, short version, if you use MidnightBSD 0.8, you're basically using a souped up version of FreeBSD 9.1 with a bunch of extra cool stuff and newer drivers and stuff. If you're using MidnightBSD 1.0, you're actually using a souped up version of FreeBSD 10 stable from May of this year. So that's roughly where we're at in terms of FreeBSD compatibility. I'm not promising long term that we're going to keep bringing in a bunch of FreeBSD stuff. I, in fact, I doubt that highly, but right now that is what we have. So, you know, if you're used to FreeBSD, other than there's a couple utilities that you'll miss in Midnight BSD, but there's a lot of extra stuff there too. Um, so the big things that we don't have right now, we don't have port snap, um, which I think would be really useful and I'm considering uh, setting up port snap. So the, the user land part of that is pretty simple and, you know, they did a pretty good job with that. The, there's a port snap build project, which is like the server piece and that actually builds all the little files that it, it sends and whatnot. Um, that needs to get set up. So. I don't know how much work that's going to be to get it to work with Midnight BSD or anything like that. And I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but I'm seriously considering setting up port snap because that would, I think that would be great. There's also a free BSD update, so there's nothing like that in Midnight BSD right now. Um, the project plan has always been not to do that, but rather build it into mPort so it's you have one unified place to get updates. Um, my understanding is the FreeBSD project's thinking about doing that as well, where they're going to have package install um, base system updates or something like that as well. Um, it, there's a reason Linux distros do that. It, it is much easier for users to have one utility to handle everything and see updates and whatnot. So I, I think that's a necessity. Um, the import package manager needs that functionality and you know, I started specking it out a few years ago and I have uh, some changes saved locally for part of that, but it isn't done yet. And I have a couple pieces that I'm still working through Etsy updates, things like that, um, handling that well. Um, there's a couple of minor bugs with the package manager, but I fixed a lot of big issues that people have had in the last couple of releases with it. So hopefully everything will be much better. If you have bugs or issues, please report them with the bug tracking system. You know, we have a Bugzilla instance currently. I may be replacing that with another system soon, um, toying with setting up Atlassian Jira or something like that. Um, but we have Bugzilla, please report bugs with that. Um, you know, if you, if you need help with something, you can email the project or you can uh, contact us on Twitter or Facebook, um, Google Plus until it's killed anytime now. Um, you know, we're still around on those, those systems, so you can, 
if you hit us there. Um, if there's any people out there that are interested in working on the project, please, you know, get in contact with me. Let me know. Um, we would love more developers, more help. Um, the project's pretty small right now, and, you know, it's mostly what I'm getting done. And I do the work of several developers, but it's not an easy process for me sometimes. It's, it's pretty much my big hobby other than playing Overwatch right now um, when I'm not working. So... Keep that in mind. Uh, finally, um, I just want to briefly talk about um, the state of like web browsers and, and other packages of Midnight BST. I'm completely aware that people want modern web browsers. I've been working slowly on porting Firefox 52 ESR, which is the latest release um, available. So, with with um, let me clarify that the latest release that doesn't require Rust completely to build. So there's a couple of features that are disabled, but you can still build without Rust. Um, we have, I believe we have like an old version of Rust available in ports, but it's not new enough and I need to get specific versions of LLVM, CLang, things like that updated in ports before we can even try to do that. So that's, that's a big goal that I have and something that um, I'd like to get Firefox, maybe Chromium, um, working in Midnight BSD a lot better and available. Um, previously, you know, Firefox was available as, as the browser port or browser 3, browser 35, and so on. But um, we haven't had a version of Firefox past, I think, 4.0 or something like that that's ever worked natively um, very well. So I think like 32 may maybe worked for a little while, but uh, that's a serious problem in our project. and. Getting stuff upstreamed when you're this small is very difficult. Um, recently, I submitted patches to the LLVM project, and uh, they gave me a big hassle and didn't want the patches. So I don't know where where we're going with that, but um, you know, over the years, I've had problems with a lot of, of things like that. And despite the project hitting 1.0 and, and the fact that we're working on this since 2006, and there's a lot of other small projects that have had similar problems, I find it frustrating that the open source community isn't more open to patches from contributors than they are. But I do understand where they're coming from in terms of testing and things like that. It's it's work to support small architectures, but at the end of the day, the patch set isn't that different from many of the other projects they have accepted that are small. So that's an unfortunate thing. Um, I don't mean to specifically call them out, but I just want people to understand that the reason that some of these software packages don't work out of the box or I'm very slow about porting new versions of whatever is because we have a lot of trouble as a small project getting things upstreamed. And you know, if you can't if you don't have a developer that's interested in your project that's also a committer on Firefox or a committer on uh, Python or, or whatever, um, you're basically talking about every new version of having to start from scratch porting it. And that's that's time consuming. That's a very time consuming process. Um, the newer Python releases have actually been pretty good about changes. I, there's only a couple now that I have to do to actually get it to build, but um, I'm not trying to pick on them. But um, we've never actually tried to upstream Python patches either, so I I have no comment about that. But um, some of the other projects over the years, you know, um, I know Midnight BSD is finally in in autoconf and, and so on. So like if you're running a really recent version of that, um, you know, you have config.sub and config.guess and whatever, um, we're finally in there, which is, you know, it took 10 years or whatever, but you know, we're finally there. That's great. And I do appreciate that they finally put us in there. Um, I submitted patches several times for that. Um, and they actually deleted the request. It was, it was pretty horrible, but, um, there's some people there now that are, they're really good. So I want to point that out that, you know, some projects get better, and sometimes it's just one bad guy that that causes a bad user experience for for someone, and you get a bad project. And and people, you know, put the word out like, oh, you know, this one Firefox guy was terrible and didn't want to take my patch, and now I can't do it anymore, or whatever. And and that's that's unfortunate. And I think that happens to every project. You know, it's volunteer work. Someone has a favorite operating system and. That's all they care about, you know. I a lot of projects favor Linux, you know. You kind of stuck with that, you know. So, 
even if you're not interested in my project, if you are a developer and you have experience working with you know, C, C++, Python, Perl, whatever your language is, please contribute to open source projects and try to get broader support out there for all the BSDs, Haiku, React OS, whatever, whatever other operating system that you find interesting, um, go out there and, and, and do that. Because there's not enough non-Linux developers in these projects and it's causing a lot of problems for everybody. Um, and it's, it's a shame. It's a real shame that uh, more of us can't enjoy open source software because some guy decided that he only likes Linux and it's got to use systemd and it's got to be locked down. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you write software, if you're working on a project, please keep an open mind about portability and not necessarily even my project specifically, but just in general. Um, consider, you know, oh, I, I'm writing a web browser. Maybe it shouldn't just run on Linux, Windows, Mac OS. Maybe it should actually run on other platforms. You know, what about phones? What about you know, people using more obscure desktop environments, et cetera. You know, because there are, there are a lot of us out there that do like that stuff and are doing this as a hobby and really enjoy it and do not need to be told that your project is useless or something like that. That's not, that's not cool. Anyway, um, that's all I have to say uh, today. So uh, if you have any other questions about 1.0 or the project or anything like that, Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, either with the official Midnight BSD account or my personal account, um, which is Laffer1. Um, you can also find me on Facebook. There's a Midnight BSD page on there. And we have a Google Plus page for the you know three people still on there that haven't had their accounts shut down yet. Um, you know, Until January, whenever they're planning on shutting it down, you can reach us there as well. Um, or on the YouTube channel. So thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for watching.